Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, look what it says. It's Alex, and it's the Ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight on the east coast of the United States. That uh, puss you're looking at, the puss. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a say, Stephen Pearl in, uh, in, uh, in Las, Las Vegas. Las Wages, Nevada. Well, I my art collection, man. Uh, here's Blue Boy. Get into the gut to squeal on Mona Lisa, see? Uh, yeah. See? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I had a Siamese cat that I almost named Edward G. Robinson. Because <laughs> because every time he would talk to me, he'd go, he'd do, I, I say, do your impression of Edward G. Robinson. And the cat would talk when I would talk to him. He was very yeah. good at it. And I would go, Shabbos, uh, do your impression of Edward G. Robinson. And he would go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that Sam does that a lot. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I'm, excuse me, folks. I'm blowing my nose. Allergies. It's apart in front of our very eyes. Look at this guy. Allergies. I don't know. Death is going to be no surprise when it comes. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, this is yeah, Stephen Pearl, this? and he lives in Las Vegas, Nevada, and he's a comedian, which means he's not working. No. In fact, he's taking in a roommate. Do you like the idea of a roommate? No. <laughs> yeah. Nice person. I got my room. She'll have her room. Everybody's happy. Her room. room. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Any it... anything going on there? No. Oh no. Okay. Not with, with, with this old tool. <laughs> my mojo ain't there, but it sure likes to sleep. Well, how old? How old is she? She's. I thought you shouldn't tell a woman's age. She's uh, older than me. Oh really? Yes. Well, you're pretty old. I'm pretty, you better believe I'm pretty damn old. What are you, 60? I'm the age Sammy Davis was when he died. 65, maybe? 66. 64. 64. 64. Was that when Sammy died? Sammy was 65 in 1990. He was born in 1925. He died in 1990. Well, let's see. The crash, car crash didn't kill him. The mob didn't. The mob took scooped his eye out for looking at Kim Novak, and that didn't work. So. No, no, that that, that they said we're gonna. If you don't get rid of Kim Novak, we're gonna take the other eye. Oh yeah, so that's it was no car accident. At least that's the story, the legend that's, that is told. I ain't no band leader. It's the story it's, I heard. It, well, that's no. See, there's a the it, trouble is the Godfather created myths. Sure. All right. Uh, it, 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 in fact, Sinatra in an interview, because I've been watching a lot of Sinatra on YouTube, and there was an interview he did in which he said, oh, I think it was on the, the story, the movie they did about him, All or Nothing at All, the documentary, in which he says that, you know, the movie Godfather gave everybody the impression that that's how I got out of my uh, deal yeah. with Tommy Dorsey. Yeah, and he said uh, nothing could be further from the truth. He said, well, "How it?" Ha they said, "I think Walter Cronkite asked him, well, how did it happen?'" And he said, "What happened was um, uh, the union after went to him uh, and and said, if you want to work another after a gig ever again, that's the American Federation of Television. Well, after it was after at the time, yeah. right? radio artists." Uh, if you ever want to work radio again, you better let him out of his contract reasonably. Because wow. he, he had a contract that said that Sinatra owed to him, what was it, a third of everything third, he whatever, uh, everything he made for the rest of his yeah. life. Same contract, so. Uh, and so um, uh, Dorsey did the better part of Valor. But he said, there was nobody going in and saying, we're going to, you know, your brains are going to yeah. be on the paper before, you know, if you don't I sign. Either your brains or your signature will be on the contract. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Which That's reminds me. So, so he said that myths get started by fiction, you uh -huh. know, and that they use me probably as a, as a singer who was looking for a movie, you know, which is, uh -huh. is true. But then the other part about going to the band leader or talking about going to the band leader and getting yeah. me out of the, yeah, wasn't true. 
It was all bullshit. It was just for the movie. Yeah. He said, uh, he said, he, he, you know, he, he finally got out of it. He, I think he had to pay Dorsey $50,000. Yeah. It was like a fine or something. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he, he wanted to get out of it because he had so much, so many offers to do stuff, you know, and he, he didn't see his career going anywhere being under the uh, power of, of Dorsey. So. Yeah. But later on in life, I heard, I saw, there was some kind of concert I have, and he, I think it was at Carnegie Hall, and he introduced Dorsey, who was in the, or, in the audience, and said, there's a great man, you know. So yeah. apparently they, they made up at some point. Yeah, you know. whatever, I don't know. Poor but Peter Harry Walker. James, Harry James, who was the first band that Sinatra was with, uh -huh. this guy was a prince, because uh -huh. what he said was, when he wanted to go to Dorsey, he said, I know I have a contract with you, but, you know, it's a good move for you, so go yeah. with my blessing. And he introduced Harry James in one of these places and said, here's a, here's a, here's a decent, wonderful human being. Wow. You know. We never threatened his life, I tell you. We weren't going to put his brains on the contract. Yeah, I mean, when I wanted to get out of my contract at Sirius XM, uh, I sent the mob in, and the people <laughs> at Sirius XM go, you don't have to pull out the guns. <laughs> Here, we'll, 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 get, we'll, we'll get rid of them. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so um, um, uh, you're you're getting a roommate. Yeah. That, that's not. Da, da, well, da, 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 that's da, what you got to do in this day and age. Yeah. You know? The frauds to clean a place good. You know, the frauds are good. Places. They extended the uh, the um, amnesty for uh, rents in New York again. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, which I, since I'm not paying rent anyway, because right. of this whole thing we've been going through, doesn't affect me, but it would be nice if it did. Yeah. You know. Well, I paid every month we had a, an amnesty, but I just I keep current. Well, what they, what they said is there's an amnesty, but if you can pay, if you have the ability to pay, please do. Yeah. You know, because yeah. a lot of people were still getting a check. Yeah. And it'd be very easy for them to say, well, I want amnesty. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't want amnesty. And uh, that, that wouldn't be fair. I mean, I hate to say this because I hate to say this about any landlord, but it wouldn't be safe to, for the landlord, to the yeah. fair to the landlords. Uh -huh. But anyway, uh, listen, um, last time we talked, we mentioned the name Lenny Clark, a name I haven't, yeah. Lenny Clark. <laughs> I haven't heard in years. Three Kings of Boston. One of the great comics. One of the great comics, uh, but not so much for his act, but for his late night cavorting. Yeah. <laughs> and the great, I told you, the greatest story I've ever heard, and you've heard it too because you made reference to it. Oh, yeah. Was that one night he and some friends got drunk in Boston, yeah. and they went to Harvard Square, I think is what it was. It's a place there, and there's a big home there, and that home belonged to. Julia Child, there you go. and drunken Lenny Clark <laughs> is screaming at the top of his voice outside her home, wake up, bitch, and make me breakfast. <laughs> make us some fucking pancakes, bitch. Come on, wake up there. <laughs> what the hell is going on outside my window? <laughs> You're lucky I have some pleasant day sauce. Knowing oh, her, so she probably laughed at it if she heard it. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Wake up, it. bitch, and make me breakfast. <laughs> Classic. Classic Lenny. He also stole a city bus once. What? He stole a city bus and uh, drove it. <laughs> Lenny's done some wild things. There are a bunch of crazy people in, in uh, oh, Boston. Oh, very crazy. Very crazy. We, we got a whole bunch of acts from Boston and San Francisco. Uh -huh. We got the Goldthwait came from Boston. Yeah. Uh, t Tom Kenny came from Boston, yep. uh, who's SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, yeah, Probably more successful than any of the comedians I ever had on. Amazing. I mean, c can you imagine the residuals he's getting? Ka ching Yeah. He's not taking it in a room. I told him the story once so when he when I had him on the show. I said, uh, I said I was I saw a little kid and he was wearing a, a SpongeBob yeah. SquarePants. Sure, right? And I said, I know SpongeBob. <laughs> and the kid looked back at me and went, sure you do. Sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But I do. I know SpongeBob. Do you know SpongeBob? I know SpongeBob. I don't brag about him, but you know. But how much money do you figure he's made on that? He didn't do that for what twenty years? Something like that. Yeah. I don't, yeah. And you know, every time they do a toy and there's a voice coming out of the toy, right. to that, it's uh, you know he he gets a big deal out of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Ding. Yeah. But uh, uh, that's the business to go into. Voices, yeah. Voices, cartoon voices. Yeah, you can fill in the void. But but all those guys show. coming out of uh, out of there were crazy in Boston. I don't know what it was about Boston. Yeah, you got Steve Sweeney, you got Don Gavin, you got all those crazy guys. Well, Kevin Meany. Kevin Meany. Who was He's maybe, he was the, the one comic, and, and all deference to you because you're very funny, and all the other people I had on, on a regular basis were funny. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had them on. Yeah. But Kevin Meany was the only one that I had to beg to stop. Ah. Because I was hurting so much oh, he was from a silly laughing. Person. I mean, and he was relentless. He wouldn't stop. Uh -huh. You know, if he saw that you were, your gut was hurting, he yeah. would just keep going. And, you know, yep. we're big pants people, you know, and things like yep. that. And stuff that wasn't in of, of itself funny. It was attitudinal comedy. But yep. he, he was amazing. He died, oh. he died on us. Went and died. Yeah, just sat down on his couch and that was it. I think I think it was a, a stroke or heart attack. Yeah, or just, I don't know. I don't know what just it was. boom, just, he's gone. He was here, then he wasn't here. That's yeah. how he goes. Yeah. Good way to go. The Bing Crosby way. You're dead before you hit the ground. It was yeah. a great game. Blah, 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 blah. What, what yeah. old comics do you watch? Old comics? I mean, really, not, yeah. Old, old. I than doing it. No, oh, you know, are there any? <laughs> Everyone out here. No, I mean, not, it. not before your era, okay? Uh-huh. Did you watch any comics who influenced Oh, sorry. Growing up, I watched them all. I liked, uh, I liked, uh, I liked pretty much everyone except Jack Carter. I didn't like him. I didn't like Carter either. Yeah, he just came off like a real obnoxious ass. He also come, came off about, uh, in a way that you went, well, what is funny about Jack Carter? Yeah, his material... He put it over. He put all his energy into his material, but yeah. his material sucked. Yeah. But he made it work somehow. I've seen yeah. him kill. People don't know who we're talking about, but go look. Go look up Jack Carter. No, Jack don't, 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 don't waste your time. Not funny. Oh wait, forget it. But I liked, uh, I liked Myron Cohen a lot. I remember him following the Beatles the second week when they and they did Sullivan. And he did okay, started. didn't he? He did really well. I like Frank Gore. I oh, the I found out something from Shecky about those Beatle appearances. Did you know that all the songs the Beatles did on that first show were pre-recorded? No, those are live, brother. The set didn't sound pre oh, the music maybe, but nope. not the Beatles. Nope, Them, pre-recorded. There was a reason why. He knew the girls were going to scream, uh -huh. and he wanted girls to come in and scream. Uh -huh. So he said, um, put them on. And recorded them with that audience, uh, and then all the girls left because there was no reason to stick around. They don't want to stick uh, around for Myron Cohn, and they brought in more audience and uh, did the rest of the show. How about that, uh, yeah, uh, uh, that's what I. Because did you ever notice that if you watch it, they they come on first. He always put they come on first, and they were last, and they were last. Yeah. But in between, there's no screaming. There's no. There's none of that. Oh. You know? <laughs> Uh, because, oh. And plus, if you're Myron Cohn and you got to follow the Beatles with the screaming <laughs> girls and everything, you did very well. You, 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 you're not going to do well, no matter how good you are. Yeah. I mean, and, would uh, you want to follow the Beatles? Frank Gorshin followed them the first the first week, and they yeah. asked him. So. Yeah, here's the funny comedy of Stephen Pearl yeah. right after Thank the you. Beatles. Thank you. Plus, of funny places. Why do they go to the, to the terminal? Thank you. Right now, get the fuck off, bring those four guys back on here. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, uh, um, um, I was just wondering who, I mean, like, Benny? You liked Benny, didn't you? Oh, my face, I got a, I wish you could see it. I got a picture of him on my wall. Somebody He's a god. Him. He was a god. He was, he was a comedy god. I got a Beatles poster and I got Jack Benny, the best band, the best uh, comedian on my yeah. wall. Yeah, yeah. And Bob Hope as a stand-up wasn't bad at all. Oh no, he could in the in the forties or fifties he could riff like a motherfucker. And when he got older he kinda of slowed down and wasn't very good. Well, hey Mexico boy, that would be no more as well. You're, you're right. But in the early days, uh, I tell comics to watch him. Yeah. You know? He, well he was the king of what I call 
There, there's a couple of things that make you good on stage, and one of which is called authority. Uh -huh. You tell a joke, it may not be funny, but you look at the audience and tell them it is, and they laugh at it. So that's what Jack Carter's secret was. Yeah, I guess. It was horrendous, man. Yeah. But he put it over. Yeah. He put yeah. yeah. Well, so well we should reminisce about this uh, next time because there's a time, the great Jack Carter, few the other, other comics. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the musical stylings of Stephen Pearl coming whoa, to you whoa, live whoa. and live. Swing it with Tony, baby. How are you? Whoa, whoa, Tony. Love to say. Yeah, and what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, That's including right. Stephen Pearl. That's right. No one's going anywhere. <laughs> I'm staying right here. But my roommate will be living right there behind me. See you next no, week. Over there. See you next week. See you next week, Alex. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey! Ba -da -ba -da -boop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -da. Hi, everybody. How are you? This is The Ramble. You know, all day long, I've been tired. I've been just exhausted. I constantly, and it has something to do with the radiation stuff that I had. Uh, but I'm, I'm tired a lot. And then I come and do this show, and I feel peppy and zippy, and, 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 and I'm ready to go. And then, and then after the show's over, bleh, bleh, bleh. Oh, boy. You know, we were talking about Bob Hope there for a moment. And I remember something about Bob Hope. He did a Letterman show, and I'm, I'm looking at YouTube, and I've got to find it because I'm sure it's there, where he was working in the next studio doing Live at Five, and they said, well, let's bring Bob in here. And they took a shot of the door where he came in, and, and Bob, if I can kind of do it, was kind of like this. He was kind of hunched over and, you know, not exactly... Um, not exactly uh, what you would call uh, alive and, and, and kicking. Uh, and uh, it um, then all of a sudden, Letterman says, and they saw the shot on him, uh, and ladies and gentlemen, look who's here, Bob Hope. And Hope just does this. He's like this, okay? He's coming in like this, and he just, boom, he's up. He's about, he's go, he goes to town, all of a sudden, he's Bob Hope. Before that, he was some old fart who was trying to be Bob Hope. I mean, as soon as they said his name and he knew he was on, he straightened up. And that taught me a great lesson. And I don't know what that lesson is to this day. Anyway, we have a thing here called a citizen panel. And we get them together by uh, taking uh, a bunch of people and putting them on Zoom. If you don't know our Zoom address, you've got to call us at Zoom. Uh, just go to uh, gabnet.net, and right there on the right-hand side of the page, about the middle of the page, it says, in order to get on, just Zoom us here. You just click on that. And if you've got a camera uh, in your, uh, in your, uh, on your computer, you don't even have to have Zoom. Zoom does all the heavy lifting. If you have Zoom installed, you get an even better experience. But the fact is that you can still get on just by clicking that. You go to our gabnet.net page. Uh, right below the um, YouTube that is running is also the address, okay? And um, also, uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, if you go to my Facebook page, uh, facebook.com forward slash Alec A. Bennett, uh, there's a link there. So these are all the different ways you can call us using, using Zoom, which is our, our new method of operation here. Let me just uh, bring some of these people in. Uh, and uh, yeah, they're coming in, and um, let me see here. Let me then push this, and there's our Zoom panel. Oh, wait, I got to get rid of something here. <laughs> the jackpot from last night was up, uh, and we don't, we certainly don't want that going. That's not. It's not. I always the optimistic. Forget, I, well, I always I always forget to get rid of it when I'm doing the show the next day, so it's there. So excuse me, folks. Now here's our panel. What a motley crew. No, uh, uh, <laughs> Phil Meyer uh, and uh, the lovely and attractive uh, Robert Natali, and, of course, our old friend and regular Charlie Wallace from the great state of <laughs> in the deep part of Texas or whatever it is. Oh, here, here we got Jeff Steins coming in here. 
Uh, yeah. So how are you all this evening? Everybody perky good. and zippy? Yeah, and... Good, good. Today, I officially became a septuagenarian. 70, well, Happy huh? birthday. Oh, yeah. 70 today. Happy birthday to Thanks. you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy no, birthday, dear Robert. Guy. Happy birthday to you. Don't you owe somebody money now? Hmm? That's why I didn't join in. <laughs> what, what What do you mean, don't you owe own, uh, owe Who some? owns the rights to happy birthday? Oh, Isn't oh. that the estate of the original author or something? I think it was, wasn't it sold to Michael Jackson? I, really? I believe Michael Jackson bought it. I wow. think you're right. I remember yeah. something like that. Yeah, I mean, it is a song in copyright, and uh, I think one time I played it, and I got a thing, a notice, a copyright violation notice on both YouTube and Facebook. Let Michael Jackson try to collect <laughs> the paint. Well, he does, it's not his song anymore. It belongs to somebody else. He also bought the Beatles catalog. Yes, he did. Yes, he did, yeah. But that got sold away from him, I think, at some point. I because, forget. I think Paul rebought it or something along those I'm lines. I'm trying to remember. I think Paul rebought the publishing rights. Yeah. yeah. I think he was broke before he, just before his death, wasn't he? He was pretty broke. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. So, what's he going to do? He's fortune since he died. But. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, that's, uh, yeah. So, how you doing, Phil? I wrote Phil a note. You've been a little, uh, you've been you're not as peppy as you normally are. Well, uh, a part of that could be that you don't want me to suck all the oxygen out of the room. And, well, that's uh, that's that's good. That's you good. know, and you know, get into every conversation, answer every yada yada. Yeah. So and I just let it go by. You know, well, I just order. wanted to make sure it wasn't because you know the stuff that you've been doing for your prostate. Uh, uh, you know, I'm sure that has something to do with it, but yeah. Uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, you know, I'm trying to honor your your wishes, and uh, oh, you know, part of that I, is just I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You've still been nasty. I mean, you know, I, I can't I can't help that. You've still been America's uh, America's. Uh, you know, everybody calls somebody America's something, and I guess you're America's motherfucker. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, now. Did, can you ask everybody who their favorite old comedian was, like you did uh, Pearl? You know, the, the, is I'm afraid to hear who your favorite comedian was. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. Oh, uh, geez, I guess I got uh, Bell Bar. What? Mm -hmm. Bell Bar. Yeah. She was okay, I, I, but she I, wasn't. She was very cutting edge. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I felt Bell Barth was one of these party record comedians. Yeah. They put out party records. There was yeah, another one, loved, too. There was loved, another woman that, who you probably never heard of who sang song, dirty songs called Ruth Wallace. No, I heard it. No, but Bell Barth had a club on uh, in Miami on 6th Street in, in Collins, 6th and Collins. Mm -hmm. And she had a body act. She talked dirty yeah. and, you know, you know. I, you know, as a kid, I thought that was, uh, you know was great stuff really uh, i always considered her kind of eh, you know she, yeah well maybe you had to be jewish you know well you know some people will say it's easier to be funny by being dirty yeah you know uh, i always appreciated clean comics because they got their they got their laughs uh in a legitimate fashion well, okay. I, my nephew is a comedian, and he's a clean comedian, mm -hmm. and he hardly gets booked. Uh, I'll tell you, you want to know a completely clean comedian? He's probably the most successful comedian in comedy. Who's that? Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. yeah was, find me yeah. a dirty tell. Find me a dirty joke in Jerry Seinfeld's act. Yeah, I've never yeah. seen his act in person. No, but you don't have to see him in person. You can go online and see his act. Yeah. Completely clean. Yeah. But who, who's the guy that played in Full House, that San Francisco, and he was a San Francisco comedian? Bob Saget. Bob Saget. Well, Bob, Bob Saget, Saget was, in fact, the filthiest comic I've ever yes, known. Yes, yeah. I, saw I saw him, him in L.A. in 1982. Yeah, I, I was. he was at the UC Theater performing, and he wouldn't allow photographs. Uh, and, but he was filthy. And yep. uh, I loved it. Nothing but filthy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he was he was quite quite dirty, and um, uh, I uh, uh, he was he was very, and he was good at it too. 
He was yeah. very good at it. When I would tell people after the full house thing happened and all that, that Bob Saget was the one of the funniest comedians and dirtiest comedians I've ever known, they'd all look at me like I came from outer space. You know, right. like, how could that be? You know? Uh, you know, he didn't tell those jokes around the Olsen twins, but, you know, I mean. He did. Uh, yeah. uh, now, there was a uh, an, an actor that died that was a friend of one of the Olsen twins, and this actor uh, overdosed or something uh, in his apartment uh, well, down in L.A. You remember? No. Uh, no? No. Uh, I don't know anything negative about the Olsen twins. Yeah. There's never yeah. been anything negative about them so far as I oh they oh you remember when they got drunk and drove a car into a tree or anything like that you know they that fill up, fill hmm? up uh, something it was an actor he had like three names and the first one was Philip yeah, Seymour something yeah something like that I, Philip I, something I, Seymour what something yeah like Seymour uh, something. Yeah. Philip knows. Seymour Hoffman. Yeah, no, she yes, didn't. Have a, they didn't have That's anything. They didn't have, they didn't have anything to do with him. I think they were friends. That, they, well, they may have been friends, but you know, a lot of people are friends in Hollywood. Close friends. Yeah, but I mean, he was. They, she wasn't. Uh, they were associated no, with I, him. I don't or, know. You know, I uh, I just knew that there was some sort of connection. Well, some uh, sort of connection. They knew each other. Yeah. Well, that's not a connection. Well, that's as negative no, as No, when I you can... say that the actor who overdosed, what was their connection? Well, then you kind of think they had something to do with his death. I, uh, all I knew was that, that was the most negative thing I could come up with on the old That, she, that they, knew, they knew Philip Seymour Hoffman. Oh, okay. Yeah. Boy, you, you know, you, you, when you come up with something like that, my wife today said, did something, and she said, you know, so-and-so knew that actor. What's his name? Yeah. And I'm going, well, that certainly narrows it down. <laughs> and I pointed this out to her that she didn't exactly give me a wide range of no. options to pick from. Yeah. But it's funny because she said that guy, he was a priest on television, looks like that actor. And I'm thinking, you know, this is a pretty broad element. But then I looked at him and I went, uh, um, oh, I'm trying to remember who the actor was now. Uh, and I named this actor, and she said, yeah, that's the one. And I went, how would I know that? And she yeah. she didn't give me any kind of real clue. She just had me look at the guy and say, who does he look like? You know. Ollie did a good job. I said Philip, and he got it. Oh, Seymour. Philip Se <laughs> now, what's the name of that actor? See, I just, uh, uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. He was in uh, Devil, Are they Guido? Sorry, no. Devil Wears Prada. Uh, I, as, as soon as I see the name, I'll go, I uh, you know, Devil Wears Prada. Okay, Devil Wears Capote. Prada. Capote. No, not Capote. Philip no. Seymour Hoffman, we still talking about. Uh, no, we're uh, talking about uh, Stanley you, Tucci. You, Stanley oh, Tucci. Oh, 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 oh. Tucci yeah. yeah. I'm on the wrong track. Oh, yeah. yeah. But he had moved on from Hoffman. You know, I had gone on to my wife going, hey, that actor. Oh, oh yeah, I see. Yeah. That That's that guy. That guy who was in that movie. Yeah. You know, yeah, that one. There was. There's actually a documentary called "The Guy Who Was in That Thing," <laughs> uh, and and uh, it's all about actors who you've seen eight billion times, but you really don't know their names. That's sort of a family game in our house. Guys like, um, uh, what the hell is the name of the old timer that? There's an actor named Dabs Greer that appears in a million things. Yeah, you know him by yeah. face, but you don't know his name, kind of thing. Yeah. Our family plays that game all the time. You had more of those in in the old days because you had movies that were being manufactured like a factory, yeah. and so they would have yeah. all these actors on call who yes. were the withs. You know, yes. they were Greer the withs. Bunch of Perry Masons. Who? Dad's Greer. He was in a bunch of Perry Masons. Perry Masons, oh, yeah. yeah. He was in Little House on the Prairie, too, believe it or not. He was the reverend or something. Yeah. So, I mean, these guys would do 80 gazillion movies, yeah. and they would just be they just be on call. Hey, get so-and-so to be in there, and he was on the withs. You know, they were starring and so-and-so, uh, so-and-so, so-and-so, with, and then all these names, and they were usually one of the names. Yeah. So. They used to be, they made a good living being nobody really well yeah. actually they made a great living being nobody because they started when they were like uh, you know 25 yeah. and yeah. kept acting till they were 80 
Sure. Yep. And they never went, you know, they never had a career and then it died because they were so goddamn popular that you die, right? Exactly, yeah. And so they, they did very well, those actors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, had a, it, I had a friend mm -hmm. whose landlord uh, was the guy who played Darren's boss in uh, uh, The Witch. Uh -oh. And you know, he, I, I don't remember his name. He had a unique look, but uh, he owned this unbelievable building in Beverly Hills. And, you know, I guess he did well in acting and he did better in real estate. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't um, know. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. Well, I, I know that uh, I know that uh, Biden is doing OK tonight because we don't only have uh, four people here. Plus me, yeah. uh, and I guess they're all watching the convention tonight. Because I, I guess tonight is the night to watch it. Yeah. Huh? You know. Yeah, I got a text to Biden speaking right now. Yeah, uh, after it's over, I bet we start getting an influx of people, and uh, you know we have a, a decent amount of people watching, but not like we normally do. So I, I think that's what's going on. How Jack dare Benny. I go up against Biden? What? Jack Benny for me going back to the well, Benny, original Benny's topic. Benny's mine. Oh, you yeah. know what it is, Benny, for me anyway, Benny, as a child, I kind of learned what timing was. That's you know, right. Like I learned the what comedic timing was. And frankly, when I got to be a teenager and watched Carson, I used to think Carson was like an homage to Benny. Do you know, do you know, uh, do you know what one of the jobs Carson had when he was at CBS? No. Oh. He was the summer replacement for Jack Benny. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. On radio. He was a magician, right? No, he did Carson? magic. He you no know, when he, when he was younger, he dabbled with magic. I dabbled with magic, you know. But uh, 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 he uh, he idolized Benny. Absolutely idolized Benny, and I did too. I thought Benny was yeah. He he remained my favorite comic from the time I was like five years old to the time oh. bull to now. Okay. And the thing was, Benny himself in his show, his television show, wasn't funny. Like all the great lines went to the guest star yeah. or to Mel well, Blanc. Well, let me explain. Or... Let, let me explain something to you. Who's Jack Benny guy? wasn't a comedian. No. Jack Benny was a clown. Yes. And the difference between a clown and a comedian is a comedian pulls jokes on people, and a clown has jokes pulled oh, on clown. him. Yeah. And if you look at Benny, he was always the butt of every big yes. laugh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that is a that's a great ability to have because mm -hmm. most comedians would like to be the one that's being laughed is getting sure. the laugh rather sure. than the one who's being laughed at. <laughs> okay. What was the name of the guy that showed up in so many shows that used to drive him crazy? Was it Frank Nelson? Frank Nelson. He was that the guy one who was went. amazing. Ooh. I love that guy. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um uh, uh, you know, ben, and Benny had the greatest writers too. He just had, just they were precision writers. They they styled, they knew the character. They wrote gags to that character, and it went on for who knows how many years. You know, ever, your, forever, and ever. You got mail uh, thing come from Benny, or uh, where did you get that? What? When you would open up the mail on the show? No. Why would it come from Benny? Oh, I was. It just sounded like that. No, it wasn't Benny. No. Did you get that, or did you make that up yourself? No, that was uh, that was out of a uh, jingle package. Uh, the, no, not just the jingle. The, the, the letters. Jingle. Oh, we get letters. We get your letters every day. Yeah, it was out of a jingle package. Oh, I see. That you could buy. Yeah. 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 I like when you did that. You like that? Okay. Yeah, when you're open the letters, yeah. read the letters. Yeah. yeah. But a anyway, it, you know, so I, um, uh, yeah, Benny, Benny was mine. But I'll tell you what I saw today. I was watching, you know, I love YouTube. That's my latest thing. To, I just get on YouTube and I just start watching endless things, one after another. And I saw something said, interview with Bob Hope with Dick Cavett. So I put it on. It was a 90-minute episode. Dick Cavett did 90 minutes in those days. Yep. This thing lasted about an hour and 10 minutes uh, without the commercials with Bob Hope. And it was maybe one of the most fascinating interviews I've ever seen with Bob Hope. 
because there were moments in which he was entirely straight, not trying to tell jokes, but trying to tell. He was asked, like, where did you start out? And he talked about that. And it was, it was one of the most revealing and nice interviews I've ever seen with Bob Hope. Uh, and if you get to see it, it's on YouTube. And I just, I sat there and I went, you know, this is a guy that we would like to make fun of because as he got older, he got, well, I'll show you what he got. Hold on a second. I've got it here. I, uh, this is we, my, one of my people at, the, at uh, Live 105 in San Francisco caught Bob Hope in the, I think it was either at some event or at the airport, I can't remember which, and got him to do a promo for me. Listen to him trying to do the promo. That's, that's he wants you to do a station promo. What is it? This is Bob Modern Rock Hope. This is, you're listening to Alex this Bennett. This is Bob Modern Rock Hope. And you're listening to... Alex Bennett on Live Alex 105. Bennett on Live 105. 105. Want to open the top? Yeah, one more. This is nah. Bob Modern Rock Hope. You're listening to Alex Bennett, Live 105. Alex Bennett. Alex Bennett. You're listening to Alex Bennett. And live 105. Now that is sad. Yeah, <laughs> that is really sad. <laughs> uh, it was the only time that I had any brush with Bob Hope. Okay, I wasn't with him when that was recorded. We did take the thing and chop it up into a promo, but we loved playing that version of it more. Uh, and he, I think, was in, in his 90s by then. Wow. So I'm going in that direction. And uh, uh, I can hardly wait till I get to that. Okay. But did you notice that for one moment he became Bob Hope? Yeah. When he said Bob Hope. This yeah. is modern rock but Hope. He did that at that lilt. And then he went right back to not being able to get the thing straight, you know. So. Hey, you guys can take a drink. Uh, looks like Billy Bob Jim Jackson uh, says it was Heath Ledger was uh, one of the Olsen twins allegedly gave him drugs. He was, he what? Him. He, he, one of the Olsen twins gave Ledger drugs? That's what this uh, Billy Bob Jim Joe Jackson uh, wrote on the uh, chat. Really? Well, I don't believe him. And uh, let's see. It was Heath Ledger, one of the Olsen twins, allegedly gave him drugs. Yeah, allegedly. allegedly. You stop with that. Yeah. When you're accusing somebody of giving somebody drugs, you don't use the term allegedly. It is either true or it's not true. And allegedly is secondary defamation, and I won't put up with it. So, well, with, with Billy, this, Bo Billy Bob, you're getting put in a time out. And by the way, I notice American Patriot is here tonight. I am removing American Patriot altogether. Why? Uh, because he has been doing really racist things lately on that channel. And uh, I just won't put up with it. You know, so. Well, anyway, there's, there's uh, other information that maybe uh, Philip uh, Seymour Hoffman wasn't the uh, friend. Well, it was it, it, it to begin with. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't Heath Ledger, huh. you know. And I mean, did they shove the drugs up his nose or down his throat or in his vein or how uh, did they? Get they did it? it at the same time they were doing a COVID nineteen test, and yeah. uh, so it, it probably went up there with the Q tip. I did a lot of drugs in my days, and I did them. Nobody did them in me <laughs> or for me. I, I thought he OD'd on pills. I, I I don't know what kind of drugs. Yeah, I thought they were pills. He took he took some pills or something that yeah. didn't agree with them. Yeah, cocktails though, right? They when you're out partying, especially with that money, you're taking a lot of stuff. By the way, if if people are going to continue to do things like say allegedly or just put up rumors, okay? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to kill the whole chat room, okay? Uh, it serves me no function on this show, and I'll I'll kill the chat room. Hello, Tony. Excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Hey, dude. Hold on. Oh, hey Tony, did you cry tonight? No, he was good. Hey, I the, the, some of the stories, even though they've been over and over, you know, going through those stories is pretty tough sometimes. Hey, listen, tell me because I didn't see it. Now. You saw the Biden speech, all right? So tell us what went on. Me O'Brien. 
Either one of you, both of you together, sing it. Oh, I don't care. Brian, I what? thought he was solid, Brian. What did you think? He yeah, was yeah. well spoken. It, it, it's what you expected. It's what you expected. You know, he, he does really say he has a. Trump. He said he has what? He went after Trump. He was tough <clears throat> on Trump. Yeah. I think they're all going to be tough on Trump because Trump has been asking for it. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, but, it's not like he isn't acting the bully and and a- asking for it. And he's going to get it in spades now. Nobody's going to sit back and take the kind of crap they've been putting up with out of him for the last four years. Yes, Brian. I did not like the schedule. I did not like how they did it tonight, though. Julia uh, Lewis-Dreyfus was all these little zingers and jokes and putting down the president by all these jokes is really sort of childish, I thought, tonight. It was different. The other nights were very, very professional. Yeah. And with her there, it was like Jokesville with her. And it wasn't, I didn't like it. Well, that's what people expect out of her. But quite frankly, I think if she wanted to be, I mean, I didn't see it. But if she'd want to be kind of interesting, she should not be what everybody expects her to be. Yeah. You know? but to be very dead serious and say what she had to say. Yeah, and it just sort of brought down to Trump's level, I think. Well, Marjorie was watching a little bit, and I said, how's Biden doing? She says he isn't on yet, and this was like at about, a, about yeah. 25 of, of uh, 11 here. And yeah. I went, why didn't they put him on earlier? That's another kind of mistake. You know, I know he's going to be the last one on, but, you know, it, it still... it. it, yeah. it, it when you get out to the West Coast, it's getting a little late, and you want that, that message to get across. Yes, Phil? They couldn't wake him up. Oh, they right. could have started everything at 5. They started everything at 6 every night. They could have started at 5. I don't know. What I, I, I don't, I'll tell you. I, don't, I think Trump is making a big mistake by calling him <laughs> Sleepy Joe. I just think yeah. it doesn't work. It <laughs> really doesn't work. Uh, he's, he, he's measured. He's... He's quiet. He's a quiet man. Uh, but, you know, Sleepy Joe. And then he, what's he calling Camilla now? Crafty Camilla? Nasty, Nasty Camilla? Nasty. I mean, Nasty. He, 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 run your own game. Go out. Tell people what you're going to do for the country. Tell them what yeah. you've already, you, you believe you've done for the country already. Make your case yeah. that way. You don't have to call people names. You yeah, know, when you're younger and single, you always had those guys who always had the Put yourself, put the, uh, put you down to try to get girls when you just tell them how you are and you get them, you know. And yeah, that's how Trump is. He always wants to put everybody down, but he has no substance himself. And it's you know like what was funny? Path. Listen to this. I was watching Trump speak today at in Pennsylvania. Are you, are you speaking to a couple of tractors, right? And this <laughs> is what he says. Uh, he goes like this. He was fear mongering, like you said. And Phil, you can listen to what he says. He says, "If you want riding in the streets like Portland." And cities burning. Isn't that happening now on the his yeah. one? Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, this guy said that's stupid. And then, you know, my mother got upset. Alex, you know what he did? He took a photo op not on, with, with, on like the dais with mentally retarded children, like adults. And he's sitting there turning the kid could around. You like tell them from, could you tell them from oh. Trump? <laughs> I mean, they don't know any better. You've got to tell me that's not phony, Phil. He's taking mentally retarded kids and using them as props. Wouldn't it be really cool if uh, you had uh, an issue and you could actually meet the president? And, you know, I don't know if he's using them as props. I think it's pretty cool to meet the president. You know? I think that's kind of tacky. Come on. These kids don't know what's going what on. Did he, what you? has he ever done for oh. retarded children? Uh, I don't know. No, you don't, because he didn't do anything for retarded children. He did something for water, you know. <laughs> that yeah, guy. That, was, yeah. that was mean. That was mean. Now, come on. He shouldn't do that. Probably. He was trying to get around to, his thumbs up. Come on. I was trying to think of the reasons that I like Trump. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, and I'm thinking, and I said, you know, it's his support for Israel and his support of the Second Amendment. Those were, those were, and, uh, you know, and his uh, reduction of, uh, of onerous, uh, what do they call them, uh, regulations. But for the most part, it's a support of Israel. Well, and- actually, I and I can't remember what the thought was today. I wish I could recall it because I would love to get in an argument with you about that. But today it came to me that he really doesn't support Israel, that he says he supports Israel, but his actions haven't proven so. Jeez, I thought his actions were uh, no, were more no. Uh, 
he did something that was very uh, very against Israel's best interests, you know. Well, he um, sold a bunch of weapons to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Saudi Arabia will probably be the next country that signs a peace agreement. Well, they haven't yet, and they've uh, got those uh, arms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they've been friendly to the United States. I mean, and also they've been threatened. No, they by haven't been friendly to the United States. They killed one of our, uh, uh, I believe, Kosoji by that time. Oh, Wasn't yeah. he a citizen? That, yeah. Yeah, yeah they a, killed an American citizen, and, you know, and, and wait a minute, and this president didn't do anything about it. And uh, Trump, said, yeah, Trump said that he would get down to it and he would make sure that they paid the price, and he never yeah. did anything. Well, he I did don't know what the deal was in actuality with Khashoggi. I know that they cut him up and put him in a briefcase. Well, I think that that's enough, don't you think? Yeah, and, yeah, and by then he was, I, I think, was he an American citizen by that time? I know, yeah. so I I know that he was, a, he was an American jury. He was running, writing he, for an American he newspaper. Here. Yeah. yeah. He was working for an American paper and he had the right to be in America. I, I don't yeah. know. He, he had a green card. Yeah. Yeah. And he, yeah. he then was subject to the protection of the United States of America. And, and they went and killed him. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I, you know, the, those things. Yeah, I, but there I was guess. something about Israel today that I heard that I, I uh, something. The UAE, UAE thing? I or? can't remember what it was that, uh, that I said, gee, that's something that kind of nails Trump is not exactly being in, in Israel's corner. Yeah. I didn't hear anything about them, any negatives. In, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, you know, I mean, uh, I I just uh, think that, uh, uh, you know, I I just like to see him play his own game, you know, well, go out, women, go out and just run for president, say what you've done or what you imagine you've done, okay, brag about it all you want to, but just leave everybody out of the discourse because every time I found that every time now that he's mentioning the Democrats, he's actually giving them free advertising. Yeah. You know, I, and I and, it, and it looks like he's bothered by them, and you don't want to look that way. Yeah, I think I know what he did today. It had to do with um, the UN and putting these things called slapback sanctions on Iran, which uh, the U.S. was allowed to do, and that will also uh, work against China. Why and is it he's doing all this stuff now? Yep, I don't know. Oh, That's women, no, Phil, come on, be logical. You know, I, I'm not going to assume that he's doing it. Oh, oh no, no, no. We're, you don't have to assume. It's very obvious. And I, I keep talking about, you know, your, your, your super in your building who around October answers your calls and comes and fixes stuff because the, the uh, annual uh, Christmas, uh, time. Tip, Christmas time tip is coming. Well, on Wall Street, on Wall Street, it's known as window dressing. Mutual fund companies, right before a quarter ends, go out and buy shares of the hot stock so that they can claim that they had this stock and make it appear as though they had it all the while. But in yeah. the meantime, it's just window dressing. Window That's dressing. why it's called yeah. such. Yeah. Yes. Everybody does that, don't they? Yeah, to a point, I agree with you. To a point, I agree with you. I mean, you know, he, and somewhere along the line, he's bound to do something decent enough you know i mean just to get reelected but that's all he cares about now all he cares about is re-election he doesn't care about the country and that's the problem what politicians care about i know he said no, he's I mean, not no a i i know he, he look he's a politician like any other phil right he's now in we're... the process of wanting to get re-elected what do you call that yeah, well, that's you what know, they do. I mean, he'll be out there kissing babies with the best of them. You well, know? you know, the the, uh, the Democratic platform is promising everything free. The only thing they forgot to put in was two, two chickens in every pot. But if they would have thought of it, they would have put that in, too. But wait, Phil, I think, uh, you know what I call him, Alex? He's John Gotti. You're going to sit here and tell me, Phil, with a straight face. Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yes, yeah, Steve Bannon. I don't know him. He was never really a part of my campaign. Was he? I may have taken a picture with him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with Steve Bannon, as he said. That for millions of dollars. But I wish him the best of luck. Uh, yeah, I wish him well. And he didn't know any. You know what that was? That was the thank you for getting him into the White House. Come well, on. These if, guys, if, he, if he stole that money 
Uh, you know, that, the Reds well, got well, him. They didn't steal it. Didn't he steal it? Uh, steal it? Well, he said. Well, he well did. we don't know that. Look, let's be very fair. Man has to have a trial. It hasn't been proven that he yeah. stole anything. He's been accused and arraigned for stealing yeah. money. You're right. You're and concerned. and a there will be a trial, too. and he will either prove that he did or that he didn't, you know? You know, I'm That's so right. tired of people being tried in the court of public opinion. That, you know, no, I agree with you, Phil, on that one. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. Uh, yes, sir, Charlie. I heard something today. I don't know if it's true or not, but now Kellyanne Conway is the only person on Trump's election committee that has not been arrested. Mm -hmm. <laughs> her husband <laughs> attorney. She will be arrested for a bad facelift, actually. <laughs> did she get a facelift? No. It looked pretty she good at first. Yeah, I think she's. Uh, her eyes are more. Yeah, than she now. did something. I and mean, well, thing, it's, uh, it's not me to criticize. Well, I, I, I like her because I like her husband. George. George, uh, who's, who's who's one of the uh, the Lincoln Project. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing they've stayed together. Who, uh, what was uh, Huckabee, uh, Sarah Huckabee, she yeah. got work done. Uh, now, her eyes aren't as crossed. Yeah. And ah. now, now she's just ugly. Yeah, now, she, now, she, now she's just tough to look at. You can't, you can't help what you look like. I mean, it's just the way it is. Yes, you but, can. You can stay out of the public eye. <laughs> That's one way. You know, you know why did I? Why did I go into radio? I shouldn't even be doing this. This should be. This whole area in here should just be like blurred. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I could do it, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Uh, oh, does Zoom have the blur thing? Like, uh, uh, no, I room? have, I have my the Zoom I have on make my face look better. It blurs really? it out a little bit. Well, if I go to my regular uh, face, everybody stand by and get ready to scream. This is what you get. See, see how clean that is. And, Sarah Huckabee, wait. You know, yeah, I look like Sarah Huckabee. But when you go back to this, okay, I'm I'm looking okay. Didn't see uh, any difference. Hmm? Yeah, me neither. Me neither. There is, oddly enough, yeah, yeah. It's you go up to that green thing up there. It's going to make my picture jump a little bit doing this. But you go to video, and then the third thing down is touch up my appearance. Oh, really? Okay. There's something you were using enhanced encryption. What? Uh, the green thing said I was using enhanced encryption. Well, I am too. You are using enhanced encryption. So what? Who cares? Well, that was what the green thing when I no, but also when you click on it, all this this menu comes down, and the menu has video, and I'm under video it says, uh, and, and you know, make me look pr better than I really look like. Uh, for instance, Brian is looking for his, right, Brian? <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now Brian oh, wow. is is going to go click on it. He, he, oh, see the my green? wrinkles went away. See uh, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> I've got oily skin, so I've been blessed with fewer wrinkles. Yeah, well, actually, if you t try that, uh, yeah, if you try that, you look like Sarah Huckabee Sanders now. Uh, got the shot before, going. before. So. Oh. Can't find um, the, uh, yeah. the window. Yeah. This, this um, uh, oh, God. How many more days do we have of this whole thing? This whole 70 something. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait. It's getting close. Oh, huh? It's getting close. Getting close. But then it's going to be scary. Mm -hmm. It's going to be scary after that. We don't know well, what's going to happen. Well, here, oh, I talked to my... It's like the calm. Oh, listen, the calm I, before I, the storm. I talked to my postman today. And mm -hmm. I saw him and I said, okay, you know, I'm sure everybody's asking, yeah. what's happening with the post office? He said, well, they threw out some mailboxes. He said, and they threw out sorting equipment. I said, can they then reinstall the sorting equipment? He said, no, because they were ordered to destroy it. Wow. Really? So they yeah. can't reuse the sorting machines mm -hmm. because they've been destroyed. Yeah, the ones that are gone are gone I for good. That is a motherfucker. Yeah. That's yeah, look, I saw one picture and they're all strapped, they're all like caution taped around, but however those sorting machines are, they were all just piled up like in a block, you know, all just crunched, scrunched together. Well, I got a thing here. This is for you. Uh, uh, I got a thing. Where is it? Here we go. Comment. This is from R.S. 
R S C H R E C E K. I don't know how you would pronounce that. Okay. It says, I live right by Brian's mailbox. And I noticed that one day later, after you removed the tape from that mailbox, uh -oh. tape. or allegedly removed the tape right. from that <laughs> mailbox, <laughs> it once again was covered with plastic and blue tape. Ooh, I'll be right back. You know what I thought about? <laughs> what about the people? Give me five that, minutes. What about the people that put mail in that mailbox that is going to be destroyed? That, well, that's what know. I thought. That's what I thought the bag was. I thought the bag was to make sure people don't put mail in, so they can take that one out. But like you guys say, usually they should have some kind of more official lock on there. Because when I drove around, the other side is one of those flip-up things, yeah. and they had that painter's tape sort of crossed around there too. But it's nothing official. Looks like so you had the opening oh, on both like sides, so you could be in a car and put it in there, or you could, or you could walk up. Or you yeah. could walk up. And put it. Ryan, did it have blue tape in a clear bag? Yes, that's official. Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah, no, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, USPS blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomorrow we've got this. Uh, this uh, postmaster general is going to be alleged <laughs> postmaster general is going to be speaking before who Congress tomorrow. Yeah, and then on Monday it's the Senate. The Senate. Yeah, which Trump complained about. However, he didn't he didn't complain about the fact that the Senate asked him to appear, and it was the Republicans who control the Senate. Yeah. So you know, but yeah. uh, he um, he's going to have to answer a lot of questions, including the one I heard something today that he was trying to buy the post office. He turned one of them into a hotel. Yeah, no, but he he he, um, uh, the, the, he wanted a, this to be a um, he wanted to buy the post office department. You know, Trump? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah, yeah. Trump? Or no, not Trump. Uh, this guy, this the Joy, the Joy, Louis the Joy. Where did you get the money to buy the fucking postal? So that's you know. How much money would that cost? I don't know. They're losing like $75 billion, so... Uh, they're not supposed to be making money. Why not? And because it's, it's not a fucking business. They're they they really losing, losing money. To begin with, Phil... They have they've to been pay losing money for years. years what is it, Phil? What is the post office? The post office was started by no, Benjamin... I know, but what is it to considered to be? Uh, a quasi-private government no uh, no oh no it's, service. it's a service government it, it, institution it's a, it's a service yeah well i i perform a service and i i like to make money when i do it yeah, by, your logic, logic, by your logic then we have to disband the and by the way forces. by the way on well, last, yeah, night, yeah, on last, uh, on last night's need, show uh, on last night's show you said the first thing i learned in business is that you don't go into business uh, to lose money, that if you if you lose money, uh, that's not a good thing. And if you make money, that's a, if you make more money than you spend, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's and good. and uh, yeah. I'm, I hate to tell you, but your theory is old theory, because guess who has never made a penny? Jeff Bezos. Uh, Jeff. Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. No, they're making money. Amazon now. has never made a buck. Usually, some people invest for the future. Uh, they ply all the money they make back into the company. Sounds like money. Oh. So far, he is not. He is yet to make a profit with Amazon, mm -hmm. and that has been his theory of operating. And that's been the theory of operating for a lot of companies these days. So, how, how do you, and if you don't how have any profits, you don't pay any taxes. No, 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 wait a minute. That's how why they don't pay any taxes. How do you split one time? The world. What, 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 if, what, what, you making money. Boy, you can't hit, couldn't hear you, Phil. Say that again. How, how did he become the richest man in the world if he didn't make any money? Because you get a you get a stock dividend on on the company, and you also get paid money by the company to be the head of it. It's not that the company doesn't make a lot of money. It's just that in the at the end of the day, they don't make a profit. Well, I don't leave a lot of money in my company either because I have to pay. Uh, I take it as a dividend, or I take it yeah, as yeah. But, but you take a dividend. You you get a dividend. You take a, you get income of maybe let's say oh, 
$35 a week, and that's pretty much uh, the profit from your company. Every two weeks, Alex. But, <laughs> you know, the, uh, the thing yeah, is, even as a corporation, I can only leave so much money in the corporation without... Uh, Phil, you're not dealing with just the, a normal corporation. You're dealing have, with a multi-billion dollar corporation here. You know, smaller, but they, you know, that's yeah. why they have dividends. And you but but your theory of business is not the theory today of business. Business, uh, business as a whole. There's a lot of business really quickly. Robert wants to say something. Y yes, Robert. Uh, I, I, have a, um, I had a late cousin. I, I have a late cousin who was a low-level executive with USPS. Mm -hmm. And we, back in the early 90s, we got to talking after a softball game over a couple of beers. And we were teasing him that his job was going to float away because of the advent of email and the advent of no one writing letters anymore. The people said that. And he gave us a lecture that night, which always stuck with me. He said, you know what you people, uh, what you people don't realize because we live in a metropolitan area is that there are still areas in the country that USPS delivers to that the other carriers won't bother with because yep. it's not profitable. And he said, for years, Republican forces have tried to privatize the U.S. mail service in order to make it profitable. And the first thing you're going to notice is that the farmer out in bumfuck Iowa isn't going to get his mail delivered because private concerns are exactly. simply aligned with the bottom line, exactly. whereas the United States Post Office as a service is required to take your mail to wherever it is that you put on the envelope. And that always stuck with me. But you know what hurt the post office too, was the internet because everybody started paying their bills via online. Okay. Thank you. you know, absolutely. Yeah, that no, really absolutely. Good. They started oh, with less you. first class mail. Now a lot of their mail <laughs> is what we call junk mail. Right. But they still turn a lot of business. Almost everything I mail well, that's different. Uh, it's it's you priority right. mail. When, uh, this is almost $8, I think, or $8 and change. Uh, I got to mail it tomorrow, put the labels on. But, you know, the, the thing is, almost everything I mail through the post office, except checks, are, are that. And they're making money on, on yes, those. Okay, but let, let's for a moment talk about what's happened to the post office in the last couple of weeks with this DeJoy. I mean, the post office, they seem to think that the only thing the post office does is uh, uh, mail in ballots, uh, which if it did happen nationally, would only be 5% of their volume, only 5% of their volume. That the people who are being hurt most by this cut, these cutbacks at the post office are people like veterans who get their yeah. their their uh, prescription drugs through the mail who say their prescription drugs are a couple of weeks late and they need them now. Yeah. I get my like doctor. I don't, we don't care about you, Phil. We care about the veterans. Yeah, but well, I, I get my drugs through the mail, uh, yeah. you know, my legal drugs. And uh, what they do is, you know, they mail it. I get it quickly. I, I don't see these Okay, delays. but there are a lot of <laughs> veterans now who are complaining that their drugs aren't coming on time. Yes, Charlie. Yeah, the last, last, uh, the last uh, prescription I got in the mail, they told me they mailed it on Wednesday, week before last, and I didn't get it until Wednesday today oh, or yesterday. That's and I, it does not usually take two <clears throat> weeks for me to get my prescription drugs from when they tell me they mailed it. Basically, it basically you watch, you get it overnight, right? Or yeah. close to overnight. Or a couple of days at the oh. moment. Yeah. So and, I mean, and, uh, if a lot of people, a, a lot of people are being hurt by this, and it, it's very obvious why it was done. It was done to sit there and and uh, give validation uh, to Trump's uh, uh, alleging that voting by mail is corrupted and terrible yeah. and won't I work. Don't. I and don't agree. Because he I, doesn't care who he hurts. It's all but, about him. But, 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 him. Yeah. Phil, 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 don't you find it? Don't you find it? Don't you find it odd that the president made these allegations, and then all of a sudden the post office starts pulling uh, post office yeah. boxes and 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 uh, tearing apart uh, sorting machines and so on? Don't you mm -hmm. find that that a little too coincidental? No, but we're going to find out when DeJoy speaks with uh, the Congress, if they give him a chance to speak. Uh, but we'll find out what the truth is. 
you know, I, Taylor, I they spoke before Congress didn't do them any good. Well, yeah. Uh, what do you mean we're going to find out what the truth is from the joy? I don't think so. Yes, uh, uh, I don't think you so. Know, uh, no, I was referring to like when Barr spoke to Congress and they wouldn't let him answer a question. Uh, they just you know, berated them. They, no, but they, they did. No, they had. They had to. Look. They had to rein Barr in because what Barr does in those hearings is he uh, filibusters, so that when you ask him a question, he will then take a, a, a two-minute, uh, one-minute question and turn it into a ten-minute dissertation, trying to play the them. clock out. They didn't and, give him one second to do a dissertation. You know, yes or no? Yes or no? Well, well I think no. yes or no is a good answer. Yes. Uh, what? Barr wasn't over. Barr wasn't under oath either. You know no, that? There voluntarily. Yeah, but he should have been put under oath. He should have been subpoenaed. I don't put under he, oath. You know, he wanted to answer the question. No, he didn't. Was, not under oath. And if he, and if he was going to give a truthful answer, oath. why didn't he want to be under oath? If, even if he's not under oath, does he have to tell the truth to Congress? Well, yeah. 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 You know, so it wouldn't matter whether he was under oath or he wasn't under oath. If he was there and he was speaking to Congress, I thought you had to uh, tell the truth that it was... Uh, and be held in contempt. contempt. Yeah. No, but if you're under oath, that's a crime. That's a, that's perjury. Perjury. But, yeah. yeah uh, but is, isn't perjury, even if you're not under oath to Congress... Uh, no. So I, I can go there and say I'm good looking, or you know, I mean. <laughs> we have to accept it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, it it it's um, it's a really real clusterfuck what's going on, and uh, this postman just said, you know, he said they we, they've been tearing apart those machines, uh, yeah. and there and he said, uh, and Marjorie said to him, well, I mean, can they put them back into service? He says, no, they've all been destroyed. Now, why do we just, why are we destroying them, Phil? Give me that uh, answer. Because, uh, you see, we're not destroying the federal buildings, so what we're doing is destroying and other Phil, federal properties. Phil, properties. Phil, Phil, don't go there. Like don't go the there. You're, uh, you're not answering the question, Phil. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, is it wrong to destroy it? No, not if it was originally the plan to reduce the machines because of the cost-cutting measures. That's, that's what I'm saying. But, you know, but why, why destroy the machines? Yeah, I mean, there's no reason. Either they're obsolete or uh, no, they, uh, no. These are working sorting machines that yesterday were working and today they no longer exist. They may have, you know, they may be antiques. Well, and, yeah. and, Phil, uh, Phil, and you're, you're, you're going to bring Phil, in Phil. new sort, digital sorting machines Phil, instead of. I, 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 I love it. Before I, the election? <laughs> I, well, it, uh, yeah. I think what DeJoy said was this was planned months ago. Uh, yeah, yeah. Months ago, well, uh, then, come on. Yeah. We you we should know. hear the plan when he speaks. Then, because yeah. he should be laying out all this thing. This is what we had planned. We had agreed to this. We had agreed to this. this That's what I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. And uh, if you don't hear that, then you agree that this was done because well, of Trump. I, it's not a this for that, but so I would, how long has he been there? He's I only been there for a couple of months. The only, I know it's like the first thing he did. Sorry, I'm plugging right. everything. Uh, you know, I might be suspicious uh, and 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 agree uh, in part with what you guys are saying if he doesn't say it. But on the other hand, I don't know that Congress is going to let him speak based on their actions in the past. Oh, it's Congress's fault. Yeah. This is a oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the, you know, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, yeah, didn't did Barr, did Barr go yeah. before the Senate as well? I believe he did. Oh, Biden? Barr. Barr. Barr, Barr yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't yeah. I don't know. Well, the trouble is when they go through to the Senate, it's a bunch of speech making by the Republicans that doesn't give the person time to answer. There yeah. were a few Republicans that were uh, asking probing questions. No, no, no. No. Uh, bar? No. They, uh, yeah, no, they were bar. giving. They, uh, did they? Did they, the Senate? Uh, yeah, Garrett when he bar? got confirmed he for got his confirmation. Mm -hmm. But they all he give these speeches about this is what America should be, and thank you so much for doing this for America, and blah 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 yeah. blah. And, and it goes on for like basketball team doing shit like. That. Thank you for your service. Yeah, yeah, it goes on for fifteen minutes. Mm -hmm. Hello, Jeff. Jeff hasn't said a word tonight. Is there a reason? Gosh. Because uh, muted? <laughs> no, no, I don't think he's muted. No, I'm on. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, I, I don't trust Trump, and and uh, you know anybody else who does, uh, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Jeff. 
That's a good one. Very good night, everyone. He summed it up, I guess. I guess that was the yeah. big summation that we uh, that we wanted for the evening. That's, you know. that's the October surprise. Yeah, yeah. You think, Early. Do you think there's going to be an October surprise? Yeah, well, I, you know, they're, they're wielding out uh, Bannon. Uh, that was that was one of the you know they're they're trying you see Bannon was a real help to Trump's campaign in 16. So if you can cripple Bannon by bringing him up on charges uh, with the Southern District of New York, that will uh, in, in essence keep him away from Trump's campaign. And so what they're doing in uh, the Southern District. Is even if okay, he, Phil. If he, so the, you're the guy who said yeah. he should be innocent until proven guilty, and now you're sitting there proclaiming his innocence. Well, no, no, no. Without, I'm saying, without benefit of a trial, that, but I'm saying that what Southern District did was it hampered the uh, Trump campaign because now he can't use uh, uh, Bannon's oh, he, expertise. He could use him. He could oh, use I him. Think I, I think he's going to have to stay away from him. I think he's going to have to be be clear of him. Well, because he never met him before. Oh, no, that's... <laughs> he never met him. Anybody who has worked with no. Trump has to get arrested now because <laughs> he needs time to be able to pardon him. Yeah, well... Somebody from the Southern I District yeah, that wait a minute, set up wait a that website... Charlie has been waving his hand for the last five minutes. Charlie? All right, Charlie. Yeah, because I, wa I wanted to point out that there's two reasons why uh, Trump does not want voting by mail. One of the reasons is that they cannot, they cannot, um, what do you call it, change the vote. They cannot, um, God, what's the word? What? You get the stamp? The no, they can't, they, they have a paper trail. They cannot change the vote because you have the paper votes so you can go back and count it again mm -hmm. and get the right count. So that's one reason. And the other reason is when you vote by mail, you can vote up to four weeks before the election. And they have an October surprise, just like when Comey came out, what is it, five days before the election with his surprise. Well, yeah. that's going to be too late if everybody votes by mail. Right. Yeah. The vote will already be in. So a lot of people are going to be voting by the feeling and the, uh, the, the, prejudice, the prejudices and beliefs that they have well, right now, as opposed to maybe yes. what might be going on four weeks from now it's simple football if you're behind in the game you don't want the clock to run faster yeah. <laughs> as much time as you, you can to catch up yeah i don't wait, wait, wait a minute wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, uh, john larkin has his hand up I, I can't believe there's anybody in this country that hasn't made up their ma mind yet so no matter what kind of bullshit they pull at the last second it ain't going to change anybody's mind I agree. Yeah. I think so too. Well, yeah. just like Jeff said, <clears throat> they're all out of their mind. Do you, know? you think? Do you, do you think uh, people already have their minds made up? I mean, do you think the election is already I set in is. stone? Yeah, I or, I can't see too many people that either hate Trump or they love him. I haven't I, seen them. I I just see that uh, young Democratic voters, the the Bernie Bros, they're not going to come out. Uh, and, you know, if they continue to say that Biden's ahead in the polls, they won't have a reason. I think to Bernie has handled that on. well, better than he did back with Hillary, Dream because on. I don't think he really felt he felt anything good about Hillary. His speech right. the other night was one that would make the Bernie bros go out and vote for yeah. Biden. Yeah. I have my own personal little poll. It's it's it's. It's strictly unofficial, but my own little poll is I notice that I can name a handful of acquaintances who mm -hmm. voted for Trump in 16 that refused to do so in 20. I know no one who voted for Hillary in 16 who's flipped over to Trump's side. That's just an unofficial feeling I get yep. that there are flips one way, but not so mm -hmm. much the other. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Uh, well, I mean, Hillary was Hillary was not a good candidate. You know, I mean, the only reason I was for Hillary is because she wasn't Trump. Wasn't Trump. You know, uh, but uh, I don't know that if I were just on my own, I would be having a a visceral sense of it that I would want to go out and uh, and vote for Hillary. But Biden is somebody I can I can I can vote for. I, you know, I, I, I like the guy. I think he's okay. 
I don't think he's going to make a great president, but I don't think he's going to make a bad president. And I think he's going to be, whatever he does, he's going to be doing for the country and out of a sense of duty and not out of a sense of self. Yes, Phil. The polls uh, are saying that more people are voting for Biden because they don't like Trump than the fact that they like Biden. They're right. And, right. And uh, so, so now whether they actually now, vote The question or not, is, Phil, isn't that the case with most elections? That no, most people vote people, for the person they want to vote for because they don't want the other one to get I, in. I, I think that a lot of people that are going to vote Trump or because they like Trump and they want Trump to win. I, just I have no idea, Boiler Phil. Uh, I have no idea, and you've never been able to give me any insight as to why anybody would think Trump is a good idea. Not after what, no, not what after what he's done. He has not been an active, decent president. Okay, he has not watched out for the American public. Under his watch, you know, we're about ready to hit what 175. Five seventy, yeah, thousand. We're over one hundred and seventy. Yeah, we're over one hundred and seventy. Then we're heading towards yeah. one hundred and seventy-five thousand deaths from Corona, uh, and he, he did and not he's, manage he's this thing. What percent? What was predicted? He didn't. No, Phil, don't give me that bullshit. Because what you Again. what you point out was that that was an estimate that was given if we did nothing. Oh, what he did resulted ninety percent less deaths. He didn't do anything, Phil. It, the states. He, did, he listen to him. He said, "I'm leaving it up to the states," which meant he wasn't going to do anything, and the states were on their own to do it. Phil, if you had he an said employee, it, Phil. if you had an employee who, when a problem arose, said, "Well, it's China's fault. It's not my responsibility," you would fire that person. You want a person who's not going to look to ascribe blame to the situation. You're going to hire somebody who's going to look at a problem and say, well, so much for blame for now. What are the solutions to the problem? That's who you're going to hire. Not somebody that's just going to say, well, I found the blame, therefore I'm good. Mm -hmm. Robert, where can I hire that guy? It was China carpet. It wasn't you U.S. carpet, the, boss. You do hire the president, Phil. He's my employee. Yeah. Yep. No, I'm talking about my yeah. store. But I mean, the, I the, the, the your point. store, if a person had a problem, you want them to solve it. You don't right. want them to sit there and tell you what what the blame is. I, I do want them to solve it, but unfortunately, yeah. most. People but you don't want a president. You don't want a president who cares about president the people above and beyond it. anything else, even above self. Yeah. You know, that, let me say this. Let me let me say this. Yeah. I John. never liked Bush. I, I never voted for him or anything like that. But I've always been a Democrat. But after 9-11, you know, I really, you know, went, went, you know what the way he brought the country together and what he said, I thought he did a great job. And what Trump has not been able to do is bring us together after this horrible fucking pandemic. He's done nothing but just blame everybody else and, and <laughs> brag about what a great job he's done. And... You know, that's that's his biggest failure, I think. Yeah. Well, and Joe has a lot of empathy because of the life he's gone through and helping the certain groups that he has during his career. That's why I think it's even bigger. Yeah. You know, we maybe, don't have to study from too. All, all, we, all we want is somebody who cares more about the country than themselves. That's it, all we it, want, Trump, Phil. Yeah. And with Trump, we don't have that feeling. There's no patriotism in Trump. Are you kidding me? Outside of his jingoistic "Make America Great Again," you mm -hmm. know. Uh, if Trump made in win, China, those hats made in China. But yeah, yeah, with the hats made in the, China. They got a picture of Biden. He he looks like he's a uh, puff of uh, smoke here. No, <laughs> that's not Biden. That's, that's Bob Conor. Barker. No, yeah. Biden. <laughs> that's a con. <laughs> It does look like Bob Barker, though. It looks like a Donald, like 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 if he was starving in the desert. It's a Donald <laughs> Trump ad uh, to uh, hit one million responses. Official Trump versus Biden poll. Yeah. Oh my God. I, you know, this is. Uh, I gotta say though, I don't know why I don't know why Trump is against TikTok because I, I put TikTok on my phone and I've been watching it, and and there's a lot of pro-Trump. Uh, funny shit on there. I don't know where it's coming from. It's, uh, a, lot of, a lot of hot chicks. You know why he doesn't like TikTok? I'll it's tell you why. He, no, I'll tell you why he doesn't like TikTok. Anybody have a, 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 an idea? I'll let you say, I know what they did. Huh? 
they got the tickets She's, from his. Somebody who uses TikTok exclusively, Sarah Cooper. Oh, oh right, yeah, yeah. He doesn't tonight. like it because he is being vilified and laughed at on TikTok. Uh, she now, was on around the world, have you seen have, Sarah Cooper have film? Have you seen Sarah Cooper film? Oh, oh, around well, the world. Well, then go watch Sarah Cooper, and you'll see why he's after TikTok. Well, I haven't downloaded that app, but you don't uh, have to. But, you don't have to. You can go to YouTube. They're there as the, well. The UK and I believe Australia have also banned TikTok. Now, is it because they love Trump? I doubt it. Uh, it's because uh, the uh, the app is yeah. supposedly yeah, they, spying on uh, uh, our personal information. I know. That's, that's why I signed up under Kirk Kardashian. Kierkegaard Kardashian. <laughs> Yes, but uh, they can still get all your, well, not if you have any friends, but, you know, they, if you did have some friends, they could find them. On who, the, who else? Who else banned TikTok? Uh, I believe it was the UK and Australia. The UK bans TikTok. Let me see here. UK bans TikTok. I signed up TikTok under Phil Meyer. <laughs> <laughs> that, would, that would mean I have friends. Phyllis Meyer. Phyllis Meyer with the hormones. Yeah. Is TikTok getting banned in the UK? There is no suggestion currently the UK could ban TikTok. Social media consultant Mac Navarro told The Sun, uh, just because the US is considering banning TikTok doesn't mean the UK will follow. Okay? Everybody drink. Everybody drink. Well, uh, the things I heard. What about Australia? So, okay. Australia. Yo, get it ready. <laughs> <laughs> Round two. Uh, you know, I, I hear them the things. Uh, you know, I. No, you them. hear things, but you don't go investigate them. Ah, I have not. How can you investigate while you're driving? Uh, you must sit in the office all day surfing the web. No, no, TikTok I won't be banned in Australia. Oh, but they were talking about banning it. No, they? Phil, you said they were banned in Australia. All right. Well, it's, yeah. when I heard the story, they were talking, or they were going to ban. It. They will not ban uh, TikTok, despite concerns that it has been infiltrated by China's communist government, according to a leading tech expert. Yeah. India last week banned TikTok, saying the Chinese company poses a threat to the sovereignty and integrity. India okay. did. So you, everybody have a drink. In fact, have two oh, drinks because he, drink. he was he was <laughs> wrong twice. <laughs> Now, no, but India has more population. No, than the he were wrong. Ro say you were wrong, Phil. Say you were wrong. Say you were wrong. Say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, right of, about of, of Ga who are watching Gabnet, I made a mistake. Okay, I made a mistake on UK and Australia, but uh, uh, well, that was a pretty big mistake, and you didn't get uh, India, know, which was the biggie. If you'd said uh, India, you would have at least only had. Right. But unbeknownst to me, I was right because it was in I pull. I'm pulling a muscle here trying to remember what the point of this was. Uh, we were talking about TikTok. But then the other thing that uh, is getting banned around is, um, is Huawei. Uh, uh, Canada uh, said that Huawei was, uh, was spy, was, had spy software in their equipment. And I believe the UK and Australia have also banned Huawei. You want to look that one up, Big Al? I don't have time because that it? Well, we're, we're, oh, we're, cool. we're running out of time. Thanks. Time for the ramblet. Yeah. Uh, why, why don't you call over to Jack? Why don't you call over to Jack and say this crap? Okay. He doesn't believe it. Uh. <laughs> hey, thank you, Phil. Uh, thank you, Robert. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. I'll get to you in a second, young lady. Uh, uh, thank you, John Larkin. Uh, thank you to Tony, and thank you to Bree, who uh, hasn't been there for a couple of minutes. And hey, Adrian, Bree, hey, say goodbye to your father. Say goodbye. <laughs> go, say goodbye to your daddy. We have to say goodbye to him and everybody else. Oh, you're making funny faces. You're silly. That's a silly daughter you have there. Yeah. Anyway, everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel and uh, with Adrian. She always makes a last minute cameo appearance on the program. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. He'll be taking your calls using Skype, okay? So if you have Skype, get it ready, get it fired up, and get fired up to talk to Jack about just almost anything okay in the meantime 
I'll see you back here again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, stay safe out there. Yes. And you know what to do. If you're going to stay safe, you got to do it by wearing a mask, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.